Hello there fellow cultists, this is DM Nell, and I'm back with another Shadow the Demon Lord talk, and this one is episode number 99, that's right, 99, we are one away from 100, that's right, did I ever think I would get to 100, no, but here we are, we're at 99, not at 100 yet, I could get hit by lightning tomorrow, but... Uh, hopefully that won't happen, so uh, look forward to 100 here pretty soon. Uh, for my 100th episode, I am going to do like I did with my 50th episode, and that is have a um, uh, run a game. I'm going to run a game, and I'm going to record it, and I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel. And um, uh, that is assuming I can find players, so... Uh, I have uh, set up a uh, find a game listing in Roll20, which is what I plan on running uh, the game in. And uh, as of this recording, I do have a couple people that have volunteered. Um, <coughs> I do need a minimum. <coughs> I do need a minimum of three to four people in order to have a viable game. Uh, and I have uh, listed as many as five people, or five players. Uh, so I could uh, still use three more folks. So if you're interested, I uh, plan on recording the game uh, Sunday, December the 11th at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so if, uh, if you're interested, and uh, I do have a couple of requirements. First of all... Um, you have to be okay with me recording and uh, putting it up on YouTube. And secondly, if you're going to be playing, uh, I need people that have a headset with a noise-canceling mic. I am deaf, uh, hearing impaired. Uh, I wear hearing aids. And um, people who use microphones, <clears throat> there's a lot of background noise. And the distance between them and the microphone uh, muffles the sound. And so it's difficult for me to uh, understand um, people that uh, are not, you know, that don't have a microphone right up to their face, uh, as you do with a headset mic. So I, that's why I kind of uh, prefer to have folks that have a headset mic right up to their face so that I can hear them clearly. So... Those are my only requirements. Otherwise, um, you know, go ahead and uh, submit. And uh, you know, if I've got room for you, um, then we'll we'll do the thing. So anyway, that is uh, for episode number one hundred. Um, hopefully, uh, by this time next week, I'll be able to get that posted, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about um, fantasy grounds. And Fantasy Grounds is another virtual tabletop. Uh, if you followed my other videos, which, you know, this is number 99, so I doubt you're jumping in at number 9, but in case you are jumping in at number 99, uh, um, I've talked about virtual tabletops in previous videos. And specifically uh, for Shadow of the Demon Lord. And <coughs> you'll have to forgive me because I'm still dealing with the aftermath of um, the shuddering pox but the um, the 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 uh, virtual tabletops that I've used in the past include roll 20 and foundry um, I've never used fantasy grounds but shadow of the demon Lord has just been released for the fantasy grounds virtual tabletop and not only, has the rule set been released, but it's getting some serious um, support, unlike the other aforementioned uh, virtual tabletops. So uh, I've got the Fantasy Grounds uh, website up here, and I have purchased Fantasy Grounds Unity. I had the uh, Fantasy Grounds Classic already. I purchased that a long time ago, but I never really used it. And then recently here, uh, I purchased the Fantasy Grounds Unity because it was it, uh, it was uh, on sale. And so uh, I picked it up. And so now I have um, 
Now I have Fantasy Grounds Unity, the latest version. Uh, I haven't set it up yet. I have not played any yet, so I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about here. But I did want to do a video about it because I had covered the other two virtual tabletops, and I thought it would only be fair um, and appropriate to go ahead and cover this one as well, uh, especially because it's getting such good support. Now, in Roll20, the only support that it has there uh, is that it has a character sheet that's been developed, and it has some adventures that have been um, provided. So there's some um, starting adventures some, and some novice adventures, and maybe an expert adventure or two. I'm not. I can't remember. Uh, but that's it. There's no rules. There's no compendium. There's no additional support. Uh, and really, the character sheet is a little bit buggy. So. Uh, it's not even getting updates. So, you know, Roll20 is not optimal for running Shadow of the Demon Lord. So you might be asking, why are you using Roll20? Well, that's a good question. And my answer would be uh, because I had been using uh, Foundry, but Foundry has its own unique issues. Uh, one of which being that it is pretty system heavy. And what I mean by that is that it taxes... Um, your computer quite a bit. Uh, so if you don't have a strong internet connection or a good high-speed internet connection, um, it can be pretty laggy. Um, and that's the problem that I have with one one or, or a couple of my players. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they live out in the middle of nowhere. And um, so their high-speed internet is not um, optimized for things like Foundry. So that's why I had to go back to Roll20. Also, Foundry had a couple of updates that really screwed up everything that I'd done uh, for Shadow of the Demon Lord in Foundry. Uh, so I had to delete all that stuff. And <coughs> it is, um, <coughs> excuse me, if I wanted to use Foundry again, I would have to start from scratch, which means a lot of work. So. That's why I am using Roll20. It's just the fastest and easiest solution for me to use currently. But is it the best solution? And I would say no. And I would say right now the best solution is probably Fantasy Grounds. And um, even though I've never played it or used it, here's why. So this is the Fantasy Grounds website. And as you can see, for Shadow of the Demon Lord, it's got all kinds of things that you can uh, purchase to support your game. So you've got the core rules here, and then you have the Demon Lord's Companion, which really are, as far as rule sets go, those are really the only two I, I would say are necessary. Um, but I'm not the type of guy that stops with the necessary. I, I, I go you know full retard on um, my purchases generally, so... Here you can see that there's, um, you know, all kinds of support for this product. And, well, I know there's more than that. So this, <clears throat> this shows, um, oh, okay, they're bundled. So, actually, I'm not sure they're bundled. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, there's, there's uh, adventures in here, and there's at least four adventure packs, and then you've got the, the core rules, you've got a cult philosophy. So yeah, you've got uh, adventure pack one, uh, cult philosophy, demon lord's companion, shadow of the demon lord, core rules, adventure pack two, um, three, and four. Now I'm not sure what they all consist of. I'm assuming adventure pack means that it's got um, at least one adventure in it, but I don't know if that means it's got more than one adventure. Um, so I, 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 like I said, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about here, but already this has more than either the, uh, you know, Roll20 or, uh, Foundry have. Uh, so I definitely wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. This is, um, um, <clears throat> this is some pretty strong support for, the game 
Uh, I mean, just having the core rules and the Demon Lord's, Lord's Companion uh, in and of itself is, you know, uh, far and above anything that the other virtual tabletops offer. Um, so, what does this look like as far as uh, actual game support? Can you use it to create characters? Uh, can you use it to, um, you know, run monsters in the game without having to create your own uh, content like you do in Roll20 or in Shadow of the Deep or in um, uh, Foundry? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. Um, like I said, I really haven't done a whole lot of research on this simply because um, I don't use this uh, virtual tabletop, or at least I haven't. Uh, but um, from everything that I've read, the you know Magic Eight Ball uh, says it's highly or very likely. Um, so if that's the case, then you know, <clears throat> then it's definitely worth the money. Uh, now talking about money, um, you can see the prices here. It's not cheap, uh, especially if you're on a budget. But th I believe that these are just, you know, one-time purchase purchases. And, yeah, you can see all the character creation stuff is built in. So, yeah, this is good stuff. Here's your character sheet. So, yeah, I think this is a, a hell of a uh, good investment. Uh, if you plan on running a lot of Shadow of the Demon Lord uh, over a virtual tabletop, this looks like the way to go. Now, I know a lot of us have been holding out for uh, Foundry to do something similar, but I haven't heard a peep about it, and so I'm not going to hold my breath that that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, uh, especially since um, uh, Fantasy Grounds just had a video on Twitch where they uh, interviewed Rob Schwab, and, you know... I, I wouldn't expect him to say on a Fantasy Grounds video that he's going to expand uh, into um, other virtual tabletops. That, that seems like it would probably be inappropriate. But, um, you know, I haven't seen anywhere else either where he is, um, you know, going in that direction. I think he's got a lot on his plate uh, based on the interview. And so I don't see that as a high priority for him. This seems like a pretty significant launch and support for the game. So it seems to me that he's probably relying on Fantasy Grounds to be the premier uh, virtual tabletop for Shadow of the Demon Lord for those you know, people that use virtual tabletops and play Shadow of the Demon Lord. <clears throat> Now, does that mean that he won't expand into Foundry or do more with Roll20 in the future? No, not necessarily, but I just haven't heard anything that suggests that's, that that's coming. So, I'm not going to hold my breath. So, I have, uh, I have made the leap. I have taken the leap. I have jumped without looking. Uh, leap of faith and all that for Fantasy Grounds. Um, so, right now I'm in the middle of a campaign in Roll20, uh, actually towards the tail end of the campaign, and once I finish up with that, then that will uh, allow me time to play with uh, Fantasy Grounds and to uh, see, you know, to educate myself. So, that's the thing with virtual tabletops. It's not that one is better than the other. I think that they, they all have their strengths. Um, Roll20 is super easy. Um, once you got the basics down, uh, it's, it's really easy to use. The problem it become, with Roll20 becomes that it doesn't have a whole lot of support. Um, the character sheet does, you know, is a little buggy, so you know I don't know coding, so I don't know how to fix the character sheet. Um, I don't know who to go to to fix the character sheet. So you, know, you just have to deal with the bugs. Um, Foundry is a great, great system, a great virtual tabletop, lots of bells and whistles, but it also has its problems. You know, and the main problem is that um, you have to set up all of your stuff that you want to use. A lot of cutting and pasting from the core rules, 
or from the, the, the monster supplements uh, to create the content in the virtual tabletop that you want to use for your games. That's a lot of work. I already went through all that and I had to delete it all. It pissed me off. And so I don't want to have to go through all that again. I would rather just purchase it from somebody that's done all the work once and be done with it. Plus Foundry is a virtual tabletop that relies on users to create modules to enhance the virtual tabletop. And that's what makes it really, really great in one regard. But in another regard, that's a weakness because when they do a system upgrade, then that means that a lot of their modules no longer work. And when something breaks, you're not really exactly sure where, you know, which, what broke. You get these funky error messages that are all in code. And if you don't know code, like I don't know code, um, you don't know how to fix it. And so you end up doing like I did, just deleting shit, hoping that you're going to find the thing that's busted. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a lot of time and effort that I don't have. And I would rather just deal with a a complete package. And that's what I think we have here in Fantasy Grounds. It looks like a complete package. It's also getting, uh, at least currently getting some uh, some strong support. Um, I've seen on the Discord, the uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord Discord, uh, the guys responsible for uh, putting this stuff up on Fantasy Grounds, talking about it. Uh, they're very passionate about it. They're 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 you know they're they're definitely Shadow of the Demon Lord guys. Um, so I think this is going to continue to have strong support. Um, and, you know, not to say that, uh, the guys that are supporting, uh, Foundry aren't as dedicated, but the problem there is that they're limited by the lack of a license agreement with, with, um, with, uh, Foundry and without a license agreement, they can't create content uh, for Shadow of the Demon Lord. So all they can do is keep up the Shadow of the Demon Lord rule set, which allows you to create your own content, but it doesn't allow you to purchase pre-made content, which is what I'm looking for because I'm a lazy fuck. But um, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at anyway. So to each their own, uh, if you have the time and the inclination to use the other virtual tabletops, you know, go for it. They're, they're all good. They all have good qualities. They all are strong, positive uh, virtual tabletops to use for your game if you can't play face-to-face. -face. I still think face-to-face -face is the best way to play. But if you can't, like I can't, uh, generally because my friends are old and... They got lives and they, you know, the, the travel time that it would take to get here uh, could be better utilized by logging into their computers and just playing virtually. So that's, that's how we've chosen to play. And that's how we're currently playing. And that's fine. Um, that actually works. Um, so, but I prefer the tabletop because it uh it's you know i like looking around the table and seeing my friends i think that's how schwab views it as well um i've seen a lot of his uh in interviews and you know it seems to me like he's he's a uh around the table type of guy i don't think he gets into virtual tabletops too much which is why i don't think he's really placed a lot of emphasis on it uh to this point uh, but now he has uh, allowed the license to go into Fantasy Grounds, and you know, those of us that uh, that do use virtual tabletops, uh, we can now benefit from that. So, when I finish my current campaign, I'm going to definitely leap into this virtual tabletop, try to figure it out, and uh, hopefully, it will be uh, light enough so that my players with the um, with the slower internet. Uh, connections will be able to utilize it without uh, negatively impacting their um, playability. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Otherwise, I'll be stuck with play with using Roll20. Um, okay, so that's the main thing that I wanted to cover on today's video, The um, as far as Fantasy Grounds go. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that there was a um, an interview on Twitch. 
And <coughs> during the, <coughs> excuse me, during that interview, uh, Rob Schwab had dropped some nuggets, of uh, things that he's working on um, for the near and far future. And I wanted to just kind of talk about that here because not everybody has seen the video. It's kind of hidden on Twitch. I haven't seen it dropped in um, uh, in uh, YouTube on YouTube yet. So uh, this, th you know, the information that he he kind of uh, alluded to, um, most folks may not have heard it yet. So I want to take the opportunity to kind of share some of the things that he uh, that he highlighted uh, that's upcoming for the game. Uh, and some of his other projects. So um, there, on the interview, there was a question asked as to, um, you know, if, if there's going to be future punk apocalyptic uh, content produced. And he said there was. In fact, he's working on um, 10 more missions uh, to be released. And so that's, uh, for those of you that are punk apocalyptic fans, uh, I'm not one of them. I haven't played Punk Apocalyptic. It's not really my jam. I bought it. I supported the Kickstarter, but it's it's not my my thing. But uh, for those of you that uh, that dig Punk Apocalyptic, uh, you got ten more missions coming your way. Uh, so that's one bit of news as far as that goes. He also gave an update on uh, the Weird Wizard, which is the uh, the next game that he wants to uh, uh, put out there that uses the Shadow of the Demon Lord uh, game engine. And so Shadow of the Weird Wizard, he gave a little bit of information about it. He, he talked a little bit about the, uh, the core setting, um, which I, for, I forget if he called it the old world or the known world or uh, something like that. Um, but anyway, he talked about a, uh, an empire that, um, uh, that people are fleeing from and going into the lands that um, the weird wizard had uh, had occupied, and dealing with all the the new and strange uh, lands there sounds a lot to me like uh, he's setting up a keep on the borderlands type of sandbox. Uh, he actually referred to the area that the PCs are going to be uh, playing as the borderlands um, between the empire and the. Um, the weird wizard lands, and when I when I talk about the empire, I'm not talking about the the shadow of the demon lord core setting. Uh, this is its own this is its own place. Now, are there going to be links between uh, the shadow of the demon lord universes and weird wizard universe? Maybe he kind of alluded to the fact that there might be a connection there. Uh, but one of the secrets of the weird wizard setting is that the weird wizard has gone missing or hasn't been heard from in a while. And so in his uh, in the interview, he kind of talked about that a little bit. And uh, he kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge that um, the weird wizard may have a connection to uh, the Shadow of the Demon Lord world. But we'll have to wait and see how that develops. Um, didn't He didn't give a whole lot of uh, details around that. But um, he talked about uh, some other details about the setting. I, I didn't write them all down, um, but I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll try to link the, um, uh, the uh, I'll try to put the link to the interview in uh, my uh, show notes, if I can remember. Um, so Weird Wizard is set for a tentative launch date, uh, March 2023. And he said, um, that that is a, a very likely date, unless of course something unforeseen happens. Uh, but he 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 said that he doesn't see any reason why he couldn't make that uh, March 2023 uh, Kickstarter launch date. So start saving your pennies, boys and girls. Uh, we need a lot of support for the Weird Wizard. <clears throat> um, we want all of the. Whatever the stretch goals end up being, we want them all. Uh, previous Kickstarters have not met, have not reached all the Kickstarters. And, um, you know, Schwab is, he learns from previous Kickstarters. The, 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 the Shadow of the Demon Lord Kickstarter was his first, and he overpromised and overproduced. And it took him years to, to fulfill everything that he promised 
uh, foreshadow the demon lord. But I think that broke the bank. And I think since then he's learned not to overpromise and to, you know, just throw out there what he can reasonably uh, provide and still make money off of the off of this thing. Uh, because ultimately he needs to, you know, feed his cats. So um, I think that the uh, the Kickstarter is probably going to be a little bit more reasonable and a little bit uh, less um, uh, uh, juicy, for <laughs> lack of a better term, uh, as his uh, last few Kickstarters. Um, but still, there's going to be some good stuff. You know Schwab. He will offer some good stuff. And so we want all the good stuff. So save your pennies and get ready to back this uh, Kickstarter that's coming up in, uh, hopefully in March of 2023. Um, so Weird Wizard is on the way. Uh, but Shadow of the Demon Lord is still a thing. And he, he did mention some things that he is working on for uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord. Now, we just d recently had um, uh, on Drive Through RPG... Uh, we recently had a um, new adventure that was dropped. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. <clears throat> here we go. All right. And we go to Schwab. entertainment and voila all right so the adventure that he just put out there is uh actually he's recently put out a couple of things so the first thing is a monster supplement called night terrors uh and this had i think this is kind of a halloween thing um but um he's got things like the uh, headless horseman uh as a monster i forget how many are in here uh i haven't read it yet i did i did buy it but i haven't read it yet uh, kind of skim through it, but um, at any rate, uh, you know, he's got this monster supplement that he just put out, and then he also has the adventure, um, Anything for Love, which is another adventure that gives uh, some attention to what I think is his favorite creation for Shadow of the Demon Lord, and that's the Harvesters. Um, so he's got some, uh, another Harvester adventure here. Uh, anything but love. I think this is a novice tier adventure, if I remember correctly. Uh, again, I purchased it, but I haven't read it yet. So, um, well, let's just see what the, yeah, novice tier. Um, so, you know, as usual, great artwork on on this thing. Uh, but this is uh, an adventure that uh, was was just released. So he has he has been um, you know slowly putting out content, but. Um, you know, not as uh, much as uh, as as uh, it, it used to be, uh, and that's of course because he's working on this other stuff. Now, what um, other Shadow of the Demon Lord things we can look forward to? He's working on some ancestry expansions. Um, it, those of you that have the Demon Lord Companions too, um, he has already put out an expansion for the Farron and the Sylph. But there are some other ancestries in here that he has not put out expansions for. Uh, and he specifically mentioned the, I think he called them bug people. But uh, in the book they're called Yerath. And he also mentioned the Molkin. Uh, which leaves, uh, out of this book, it leaves the Hamadryad, which I don't think he's done an, an expansion for. And the Naga, which again, I don't don't think he's done an expansion for. So I don't know if he'd plan on doing those. If I had to guess, I'd say he probably is going to do those eventually. I uh, just don't know if those are on, a, on his immediate radar or if that's uh, further down the road. Uh, so at least a couple of Ancestry expansions are on the way. And the big news, for me anyway, this is the, the, the thing I've been waiting for. <laughs> um, he's going to start work on the Return of the Witch King uh, uh, Adventure Path. So he, those of you that had uh, uh, participated in the Occult Philosophy Kickstarter know that that was 
one of the stretch goals that he had set. Unfortunately, we didn't meet that stretch goal, which is why I'm telling you fuckers to back the White Wizard, or White Wizard, Weird Wizard, because we want all the stretch goals, damn it. I wanted the stretch goal, we just didn't meet it. Um, and I threw all the money at him I could, so... Um, but, he is planning on doing the uh, Return of the Witch King. Um, hopefully, that's something we'll see in 2023. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I was kind of going, I was going to write my own Return of the Witch King, uh, adventure. Uh, but now that he said he is committing to it, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait because I want the real thing. So anyway, that is, uh, that's something that he's going to be, uh, working on. Sounds like, uh, fairly soon. Uh, the other thing he's, he wants to work on, and he didn't really give a timeline on this. And he's mentioned this before in other interviews as far back as 2017 and 2019. Um, so I think this is on his wish list of things to do, but it keeps getting pushed back for other priorities, is my guess. Uh, but he mentioned it again, so I think it's still on the forefront of his um, wish list. So hopefully he'll be able to make time for it sometime in 2023. But there is a supplement that he wants to work on. He didn't give a whole lot of details on what this looks like. So I don't know if it's going to be a treatment like uh, Godless. I don't think it's going to be its own game like Punk Apocalyptic. So maybe like something in between. Uh, or maybe even just a series of adventures with some rules updates. I really have no idea. He didn't, he didn't really uh, expand on it. But uh, the project is called Abaddon Angel in the Void. And the way he describes it is that there is a space station that is trapped in the void. And the people on the space station... <laughs> Excuse me. People on the space station are fighting to survive. And, you know, I think it's going to be a, um, a sci-fi... Uh, in fact, he said it's going to be a sci-fi uh, setting. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be um, still in the Shadow of the Demon Lord universe, but it's going to have a sci-fi twist to it, uh, which is awesome. He's already kind of uh, dabbled. He, he's, he dipped his, his pinky toe in to sci-fi just a tiny bit uh, with the Beyond the World's Edge supplement, um, where there is a crashed spaceship um, as one of the encounters that uh, um, you can, um, that they, that the uh, players can explore um, right there. Now, whether this is connected to Abaddon or not, who knows? That would be kind of cool. But at any rate, um, this is going to be a science fiction setting, which sounds great to me. I love sci-fi and, uh, you know, if it's got the Demon Lord engine, more power to it. Bring it. I will eat that shit up. I'll throw all my money, all my wife's money, all my daughter's money, and my my aging father's money. All is being thrown at it. So bring it. I will. I will be first in line for that shit. So um, Abaddon, Angel in the Void. Hopefully, we'll see something uh, in the next year. Uh, but that's about. All I can recall that he mentioned is in the works, uh, or at least potentially in the works. So I uh, wanted to throw that, uh, that tidbit of news out there uh, on, in this video as well. Um, and I think that's about it. So <coughs> before, <coughs> before I start getting into another coughing fit here, let me go ahead and wrap up the video. I want to thank everybody to wa that watches. Um, and it has been watching for the last 99 videos. I appreciate your, uh, your views. Um, again, look forward to, uh, to producing the, uh, the 100th video with a, um, with a game. And, uh, this time I'm not creating this game. I'm going to use one of the, um, one of Schwab's, um, published adventures. And uh, I'm going to be adding my own little bits to it, but uh, it'll be mostly the backbones will be Schwab's adventure anyway. Um, so more to come on that. So um, anyway, thanks again for watching and hail to the Demon Lord.
How do I turn this damn thing off?